10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Top of the Pops. This is number one of two little boys. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, same time next week for another Top of the Pops. Woo! Oh, another day, another dollar. Dave oh. Byer, mister. I wasn't sure Joe Cocker was going to get on the stage and let off. Oh, dear, oh, dear. What was he, uh... You've been at the licorice all sorts again. <laughs> you covered brilliantly, then. Well, at your service. I mean, it's only an idea. Oh, yeah, 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 goodness yeah. me. Yeah. Let me get through that. What's yeah. going on? Yeah. There, right there. We'll talk about that. Goodness me. Yeah. 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 Where's the fire? Oh, now then, now then. Uh, now then, now then. What do you beautiful young ladies possibly want? I hope you're not looking for Mark Boland's naughty dressing room, because that's a bit further down. The girls were hoping for a little chat and to get autographs. Well, I'd be very happy to oblige, only if your mother's happy for you to enter a gentleman's boudoir. Of course we are. Yeah, of course. And so am I. Uh, we can go for a drink and come back later and get them, Jimmy. Why don't you do just that while I have an enchanting soiree with these fair maidens? Yeah. So, ladies. Could you give me one moment? I said I'd call you. I know you did. I need you to drive me back to the hotel, piss off back to Manchester and look after the club, then fetch me London Sunday. I can't. Why not? Some are ton. What, some poxy bird? You'll have to drive yourself. I don't have to do anything. I don't see why I should spend my whole life as your gopher. Because you know which side your bread's buttered. Because without me, you'd be out. Roof over your head, work. I could find work. Oh, yeah, who with? And even if you did, a word from me, and you'd be out on your ass. Am I right? Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, father. Sorry, father. Well, hey, I'm on a promise. All right, then, on your way. Take the coach, not the train, it's cheaper. Thanks. Oh. Where's your pals? Their mum's thought you were busy. Yeah? Where's your mum? Came on me own. Yeah? So we up for a bit of fun. <laughs> Right, well, uh, you got your autograph, so run along. Don't, don't go anywhere. Night, Jimmy. Yeah, night, night, choir master. And uh, remember me in your prayers. Oh, I will do. So, the night is ours. The bright lights are wait. <laughs> So, uh, how come your mum didn't come along with you tonight? We don't really get along. Yeah. It's not exactly the Ritz, but uh, it's got everything we need. What do you mean, everything we need? I think I'd like to go home. Where's home? Walthamstow. Oh, don't worry, I'll get your taxi afterwards. After what? Then up to us. I want to go now, please. Hey, 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 listen, listen. Every princess is nervous on a wedding night, but there's no need. 
We won't say it long. But please, I don't want to. If you struggle, it'll only make it worse. Now, come on. Leave it on the other side. Which is good. I don't think at the time it occurred to me that he was an old man in a young environment. But subsequent to me having the meeting, or whatever you might want to call it, in my 20s, that's when it became his, yeah, it's like a dirty old man trying to mix with young people. He fooled everyone. He had, he had adults eating out of his hand. He, he, he just had... He had the persona about him, you know. Everyone wanted to be associated with him and he just had that aura about him. Everybody loved him. Um, you know, he, he was the, the star of the day. Um, I think he was an extremely clever man. If he was had any, there was no talent, but I think he was probably one of the biggest manipulators of people to rise to the status that he did. Anybody important, he would put himself in the middle of that. Now, you could look at that in two ways and say, OK, then, did he, did, did he just do that for to, to groom more people for more access to more vulnerable people? I think three quarters of him, that was the intent. I think the other quarter was he, in his own sick mind, believed that if he'd done enough good, it would weigh out the bad. Are we going to write this book or not, Dr. Wordsmith? Top of the morning to you, Daniel. And to you, Jimmy. How are you feeling? As often as possible. You look a bit worse for wear. Yeah, I am. Now you know why I don't drink. Brisk run to the headland and back, showered, chat, shaved, ready to rumble. No, uh, what's this? Scarborough breakfast, tuck in. Where were we? Birth of Top of the Pops. Ah. As Wordsworth said, bliss was it in that dawn to be alive, but to be young was very heaven. You were well into your middle age by then. Age is just a number when you're having fun. 
But what happened, Daniel, was I made the mistake of letting people see just how much fun I was having. Ah, greetings, fellow scribes. Keep those Remingtons clacking, deadlines away, and I don't just mean ye old cop opening at 12 noon. Edit, my good friend. All right, Jimmy, what have you got for me this week? Uh, a cheery piece about how youngsters should be kind to old codgers, and for my Jimmy from the pulpit, Nib, a quote from Psalm 37, verse 4, delight thyself in the Lord thy God, and he shall bring thee the desires of thy heart. Good, thanks. Terms as per, we paid in full, within seven days, etc. Thanks. I'll get this to bed. How was, how was things in the world of hackdom? Uh, yeah, good, thanks. Any, any uh, big scoops in the offing? Um, yeah, actually. We're just about to run a story alleging that someone at number 10 is a Soviet spy. Well, and has the gentleman uh, in question been informed? I'm sure he will be. In time to prevent publication were it to be untrue. I'm sure we wouldn't run such a story if we weren't confident we had hard evidence. Well, you'd need to be. Because if said gentleman believed he were being maligned, he'd likely pick up the phone to Mr. Legal Eagle and instruct him to take you to the cleaners. And who would blame him? Keep up the good work. What you have to understand, Daniel, is the more a man like me tries to spread fun and happiness, the more you get naysayers trying to stop you. How would they try and stop you? By making up stories about things that didn't happen. Gentleman meets damsel. They frolic merrily. Everyone goes home happy. Where's the story in that? Well, the story would be if the frolicking wasn't merry, but inappropriate because the damsels were young and vulnerable. Never happened. Some people might think there's no smoke without fire. Look at that cigar. Do you see smoke? Yeah. Do you see fire? No. There, free science lesson. <laughs> but sometimes there is smoke where there's fire. You see, you're being negative, well, whereas, whereas I stay positive. Hmm. But in order to protect myself, I had to keep my eye out to make sure that the naysayers didn't stop me from doing nice, happy things. Hello, BBC. How can I help? I'd like to speak to someone in charge, please. In charge of what, dear? Top of the pops. Is it about tickets? You have to write in for those. No, it's about... A very serious personal matter. You see, all she ever wanted was to be on the telly. It's urgent. Dirty weekend in Bali when we were the business. Eh? <laughs> Get this man a new heart pronto. So, how's tricks? Tickety-boo, as ever, Dr. Newshound. <laughs> Good. So, what have you got for me? 
Uh, marathon, week Saturday. Uh, Kitty's Cancer Charity. Starting and finishing in Roundy Park. There'll be a Beano afterwards. Brass band, young lady in tutus, all that bollocks. I'll give you some bullshit for an exclusive. I'll be there. Yeah. And, and the BBC have tapped me up to do religious programmes. Why not? You're a man of God. Why not, indeed? Yeah. I, uh, I even suggested a new show for them. Savile's Travels. I travel up and down the country, interviewing folk, playing the requests. Perfect. That for a nomad like you. Yeah. You, uh, said you had a favour to ask. Yeah. Yeah, you've not heard about uh, any hacks uh, sniffing down my personal life, have you? No, I haven't. Why? Don't let it sit sense. Not that I'm concerned. The sweet FA to find, as you well know. As well I know, sir. Yeah, just keep your ears to the ground. Well, bloody hell, they're done with you already. <laughs> you look like a new man. <laughs> What on earth is that? My new home from home, Mother. And, uh, fish and chip. Why? They made homosexuals legal and abortion. If the Pope hadn't got enough on his plate without you criticising him. I didn't, Mother. I just pointed out that a lot of young people disagree with him. That's the, that's the point of the show. The BBC want me to help young people, you know, understand, make sense of, of the modern world. The Jimmy Savile you see on telly and in the papers, that's, that's just an act. But I still don't think it's a respectable act. I mean, why are you wandering the country sleeping in this thing? So oh, don't spend me hard-earned on hotels. Well, it's odd. I doubt I'm the only one that thinks so. I'll get you an ice cream. Hey, Mr. Jack and Ellie, look who's here. Sav! Mio amico. I didn't know you were in town. Yeah, just uh, showing the, the Duchess a new set of wheels. <laughs> she loves it. Ooh, bloody hell. Versatile. Now, I, uh, I come bearing gifts. Ooh. There you go. That should help drum up trade. <laughs> Not half. <laughs> Kids come in here all the time asking to meet you. Girls especially. Yeah, sadly, this now being the Duchess's home, I'm uh, on my best behaviour. Pity. Anyway, here you go, Sam. On the house as ever. Give my love to the Duchess. Grazie, amico. Riva Dirty. There you go. <laughs> there we go. Scarborough's finest. You know there's talk about him. What talk? Peter Giaconelli. Boys. Oh, for my sakes. Whatever next? You don't believe it, then? The mayor of Scarborough, who dispenses ice cream-shaped happiness to countless thousands. And that's what the local gossips come up with. I hope you don't believe that, Mother. Well, it's a Christian duty to think the best of people. I mean, you wouldn't believe it if someone came up with some malicious tittle-tattle about me, would you? Why would they? No reason. No reason at all, Mother.
you mean? Huh. Bloody hell, mate. Could have not. Yeah, I did. I'm out of our company. Apologies. Bill wants to see us. It's urgent. about then? Uh, it's probably this investigation into standards of behaviour at the BBC. Not that old bollocks. Greetings, King Billy. And uh, congratulations on your elevation. No one mourned the passing of uh, Mr Stone more than I, but I can't think of a better man to fill his shoes. Thanks, Jimmy. <laughs> but, uh, I have much more important matters to discuss. Right. How can we help? With this, I hope. Name of Sarah. She was found dead on her bedroom floor by her mother a few weeks ago. She'd taken an overdose. Transpires she attended the recording of several Top of the Pops. Good God. She left a suicide note in which she referred to having sex with a disc jockey she met on the show. Yeah. Mother was horrified and contacted the BBC, and now she's gone to the press. I have to ask this, Jimmy, as I'll be asking all the presenters of Top of the Pops. Did you know her? Never laid eyes on her. Poor lass. But this is the sea we find ourselves swimming in, gents. Top of the Pops is a national phenomenon. Young people, especially girls, are obsessed with it. Uh, that's why we're in the tabloids. Mm -hmm. If I had the slightest inkling that any DJ had had a relationship with an underage girl, I would have been in here to report it. Underage girls shouldn't even be attending the show. Yeah, we do our best to prevent that. How? Well, if they look young, we ask them. Uh, if they lie, what can we do? I mean, the whole building is, is a rabbit warren. It it's is. impossible to keep tabs on... Mm. Yes, uh, it is. Yeah. Who, ..who they are, what they're doing. And there's the bigger question, uh, did it happen? Why do you say that? Because of my insight into the mind of youth. Don't forget the BBC asked me to front uh, Speakeasy. Mm -hmm. And it's a sad fact that a lot of these young girls, so obsessed with fame, they don't know truth from fantasy. They lie about their age to get on the show, and then they lie about their encounters with their pop heroes to impress their friends. But the claim is here the girl had sex with a DJ, not a pop star. Well, some DJs now achieve the same status as pop stars. Due in a large part to the gentleman sitting beside me. With the result that, uh, sadly, we too become, you know, the focus of the teenage fantasies. I hear you, Jimmy, but we need to get to the bottom of this. I expect nothing less. A lawyer's already looking at DJs and producers taking favours to play records and so on. They're going to want to look at this too. Very wise decision, one which I fully support. And I know we, uh, we will do everything in our power to uh, assist him. Mm. Absolutely. Good. Good God. The charity work, why do you put so much time and effort into that? Two reasons. One, as a tribute to the Duchess, who set me on the path as a young lad by making me help out in church jumble sales. And two, as I said to His Holiness the Pope when I escorted him round Yorkshire, if I can bring a little bit of sunshine into the lives of those in need, then I bring it into my own. It's just that some people have suggested there could be an ulterior motive. What ulterior motive might that be? That such relentless work for charity... That has raised tens of millions... ...could be motivated by a desire to compensate for a darker side. Now, I'm not making any accusations. I'm just simply asking you the question. Yeah, and I'm simply answering it. It's fucking bullshit. And anyone who says that is a cunt. Jimmy! 
Can't believe it. The Beach Boys play in this hospital. People live on it, sunshine. With that, the world and his wife turning up. Lecture theatre only holds 200. That's why it's patients and staff only. That's why we've been keeping it hush hush, Graham. We'll get you a front row seat, buddy. You're a bloody saint, you met. Well, not yet, pal, but you know, feel free to put in a word with the Pope. Where's Charles? Eh, uh, he's in the hall, just checking everything's ready for the concert. Eh, uh, he's a bit of an old fuss pot, isn't he? No, he's not. He just likes to do things right. I don't believe we've met. Beryl. Ah. And I think he's been very good about this. About what? You're coming back to hospital when he said he didn't want you. Flirting with nurses and carrying on and scaring patients. Don't flirt with the nurses, darling. If anything, it's the other way around. And I've never frightened anyone in my life. And Charles didn't have much choice. Prime Minister Wilson has asked me to front the I'm Back in Britain campaign, which means asking celebrities to uh, do some voluntary work. Hence my two days a month here working as a porter. And I brought the Beach Boys. Mm. Well, Charles is pleased about that anyway. There's a letter here for you. Can you read it? I, I need specs. Why do people write to you here? Well, I'm a nomad, you see, so they, they write to me wherever they think they can find me. How come Charles told you he'd banned me? Mind your own. Do I detect more than a mere professional relationship? Detect what you like. Is it a patient from Broadmoor Hospital asking if you'll open a fate? Yeah, I get all sorts of uh, crackpot requests. Hiya, love. Hey, <clears throat> um... Batting above your average there, pal. Wouldn't mind giving a smack to ask myself. Hey, less of that. Beryl's a very nice person. Oh, yeah. How do you meet her? She works in canteen. They want your eyes met across the meatballs, eh? Love at first bite. We're in a serious relationship, if that's what you And there was me thinking you'd be a bachelor boy forever, Charles, like me. Oh, well, anyway, I, uh, I wish you both much happiness. Thanks, Sam. Anyway, the all's all set. We just need the Beach Boys. Well, ah, they'll be at t, t Queen's Hotel, trying to make sense of Woody Yorkshire accent. Up and I'll go fetch him. Hello. Oh, hi, um, is that the yes. Is with you? Yes, he is. Can I, um... Aye. Yeah, can I Aye, he's with me now. Can you tell me yeah, all right. It's for you. Someone called Alby. I'll, I'll see you in the hall. Right. I'll be. Your sixth sense wasn't wrong, Sav. They are digging into your personal life, and it's the paper you write for. OK, now. You don't sound surprised. I'm just outraged, that's all. How close do you think they are to running it? It's not imminent, according to my source, but I guess with that piece in the news of the screws about that last top in herself, that was bollocks, that, Albie. Yeah, but they'd not want to be scooped. When I mean, Jerry Lee Lewis married a 13-year-old, can't imagine David Bowie checks birth certificates. John Peel has that bloody schoolgirl of the year thing on his show, and you're the one getting in the neck. Having mental problems, he wouldn't have thought there was anything odd in inviting me. Really?
Yes, I recognize him. So, for what do we owe this honor? Uh, one of the shows I do for the BBC is called Savile's Travels, where I wander the highways and byways of the country, talking to people about their lives. Sweets getting smaller because I think some of them are. Uh, no. Ours are as big. Yes, at the family loved them, so he thought he'd try aniseed balls and humbugs, and then he thought, well, why not open a little shop? And the rest is history. Jimmy! Sir Arlo. Good to see you. You two great man of Fleet Street. Pop up everywhere these days. If there's a worthy cause, I'll be there. And inspiration for those columns? I'm told yours are the most read in the paper. Responsible for <laughs> tens of thousands of extra sales. I know the paper is thrilled to have you on board. And long may it continue, I hope. Why wouldn't it? You haven't had offers from others. I'm never sure of offers, Sir Alan. Well, I'm sure the paper would more than match them. Very good to know. And uh, needless to say, I would like to stay. And uh, the editorial staff are very supportive. I'd like to think so. You don't sound quite sure. I'd like to think that they would support me if my reputation came under attack. Why shouldn't you? Well, there are certain elements in Fleet Street who love to shoot down public figures based on little more than idle gossip. <laughs> True, but uh, the paper you write for prides itself on dealing with facts, not gossip. And long may it continue, I hope. Morning, scribes. Slow news day. Eddie, my good friend. A lot of glum faces out there. Everything OK? Yeah, yeah, fine, thanks. I'd hate to think they'd had to uh, spike a major story or anything. Well, if we did, it would be my problem, wouldn't it? Not yours. Indeed it would. Today's piece, Broadmoor and Mental Illness. Pulpit nib, Isaiah, learn to do good. Seek justice, correct oppression. Terms as per. Your contract has been renewed for another year. Well, who am I to argue? How'd it go? I answered every question as honestly as I could, and he still didn't seem satisfied. Tenacious bugger. Mm. Never met a lawyer who wasn't. Good luck, anyway. Only nobody's any good luck. Good afternoon. Mr. Stewart is uh, quite right uh, when he says Top of the Pops is the biggest show on TV. The numerous presenters, producers, uh, production staff, uh, whose names I couldn't even begin to tell you. So, you know, he can't be held responsible for everything that goes on, and nor can I. You can tell me what you've seen. Just young people having fun, fun, fun. You've never seen inappropriate behaviour by staff? Not once. Touching, fondling, 
any sexual activity in dressing rooms, etc.? Never. Did you ever meet Sarah, the girl who killed herself? To the best of my recollection, no. To the best of your recollection? Yes. Does this assist with your recollection? It was taken just after the end of the show in question. If I had a pound for every pretty girl who stood next to me in the Look studio... Look again at where your right hand is. It's on her back. Her back or her bottom? Her lower back. You've an odd idea of human anatomy, Mr. Savile. Perhaps they taught that at the public school you went to. They didn't at mine. I'm going to ask bluntly, did you have sexual intercourse with her? Bluntly, no. Have you ever had sexual contact of any kind on BBC premises? As God is my witness, no. Have you ever been out with girls you've met on the programme? Girls, no. Young ladies, yes. I'm quite open about it. But what I say is, get your folks to invite me around for tea. Then, if romance blossoms between myself and the young lady, later, everyone's happy. I know you are an eminent chap, and I don't mean to tell you your job, but you need to have a think about who it is you're talking to. I'm talking to a disc jockey. And a practising Roman Catholic. Your religion is of no relevance. It is to the BBC, or they wouldn't have made me present to religious programmes. I'm a bachelor. I don't deny it. And I've got an eye for a pretty lady. But underage girls, Jimmy Savile, admired by Mary Whitehouse, founding member of Lord Longford's Commission on Pornography, who does extensive charity work for Broadmoor and Stoke Mandeville, any of whom will be more than happy, I'm sure, to provide you with a character reference. That's not to say I don't think it's quite right the BBC asked you to establish the truth. Well, he was an even bigger asshole than I expected. Oh, yes, yes, yes. What's that? Girl's inquest was today. <clears throat> but we've done nothing wrong. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> yes, we've all seen a bit of harmless flirting around the studio, but in the end, pop music's about sex, isn't it? TV audiences, they want to see girls in short skirts flaunting themselves for their pop hero. And that's what we gave them, for God's sake. They wanted fun. We gave them fun. Exactly. I know you're a ladies' man, Jimmy. Underage. You'd never do that. Well, you've answered your own question, Johnny. Quiet. Without you, the show would never even have got off the ground. I don't think the BBC even know how lucky they are to have you. <clears throat> well, the better bloody ad, choir master. Yes.
You see, Dr. Wordsmith, people say things about me with no evidence. That doesn't mean I don't have to be wary. I mean, they couldn't find any evidence against Jesus, but they still crucified him. You see, I never let the suspicious minds and naysayers get under my skin. I just focused on spreading sunshine and giving people a lovely time. Hey, don't roll your eyes. I knew I was succeeding. Everywhere I travelled, and I travelled everywhere, people told me to go, oh, there's Jimmy being Jimmy. Look at what he does for people. Now, Libby, tell me how you ended up in a wheelchair. And I dived in the shallow end of a pool. Right, and you got more than a headache. <laughs> I did. <laughs> now, uh, you broke your back, you ended up paralysed, you've had uh, six operations. But I've not um, given up hope of walking one day. Right, but before you came to Stoke Mandeville, you had given up. I had, Jimmy, and I never dreamt I'd meet you here. <laughs> well, the pleasure is all mine. The pleasure is all mine. Now, how would you find the staff here? Brilliant. Because I'm told the physios put you on the parallel bars every day, and they're kind, but they're quite strict. They are. Do they ever smack your bottom? <laughs> I wouldn't feel it if they did. Oh, oh right, so you wouldn't mind? <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. Right, now, and have you got a boyfriend? We split up after the accident. Well, let's hope you find another. <laughs> if anyone will have me. <laughs> oh, I'm sure someone will have you. <laughs> Time to choose your record, Libby. What's it to be? What's your favourite? I'd like to hear um, Green Tambourine by the Lemon Pipers, please. Marvellous choice. Victor, my good friend. What on for a shift? Where do you think Charles will want me? Casualty. Three RTAs in the last hour. Going down there now. All right, OK. I'll be on with a sec. Just want, I just want a quick favour off Beryl. Fair enough. What favour? Would you be so kind as to read this letter for me? See you an optician. I keep meaning to. Too busy doing God's work. You? An OBE? No. Well, is that what it says? You know perfectly well it does. What do you reckon Charles will say to that? What do you mean? Well, I mean, he's never likely to get a letter like that, is he? So what? But you think, you know, sometimes I think you could have done better. Then Charles? Better in what way? Well, you know, some women like a fellow with a bit more lead in his pants. Yeah. Hey. I like a man who treats a woman with respect. Now, you might get away with that with some at nurses, or God knows I wish they wouldn't let you, but not me. You stuck up bitch. Oh, Sav. They do short staffed. Oh, desperately. Thanks for coming in. Mm. You all right, love? Yeah, fine, thanks. What's this? Oh. Oh, damn me. OBE. Services to charity. 
<laughs> they don't give those out in conflict package. Congratulations. Thanks, pal. Well done. Hey, Beryl? How is it that you must think so? I'm sorry if you thought I was short with him. Well, you know, it's a massive credit to him. It's just that you didn't want him here and now you're praising him like the rest. No. Well, you have to think about what he's done here. I do. And I say to the nurses, don't let him do that. Well, uh, it's just Jimmy being Jimmy. He's been like that since he went here to a grasshopper, full of himself. He bought the Beach Boys and Noy Orbison here. You know, he, he makes people laugh. He sits with sick and dying. You know, I've seen people overwhelmed with gratitude. I know. If that were enough to make me like him, I'd say it. I don't know. But I know you do. about to start, Mother. Come and sit down. Oh. And now to Yorkshire for a festive edition of Songs of Praise, introduced by a very special presenter. I'm Harry Seacom. Good evening, one and all, from the Church of St John the Baptist in oh, the wilderness, Crag <laughs> Vale, a wild and wonderful place in God's own country. Uh, in other words, doing songs Yorkshire, of praise. The land of my birth. Oh. We have a wonderful show tonight, which uh, reflects on those wonderful Christmas themes of faith, love, and family, which every single one of us love to celebrate. And celebrate tonight we will, whether you be a chimney sweep or a prince, a dairymaid or a duchess. Uh, gather round oh the telly God. box and join so me. Proud to of you. Your host mm. for what I am sure will be this. a wonderful. I was going to wait until. Uh, until they announced it on New Year's Day, but, uh... Dear. Your son, James Savile, O-B-E. <laughs> the Queen. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. The happiest day of her life and mine. Bar one. Bar one. And what was that? I'm coming to it. Oh. Oh. It's one of the first cars I ever rode in one of these rovers. Well, I thought it'd be a trip down memory lane, you see. <laughs> Behold, Mother, my work. Pass it down. Who are they? Who are they? They are damaged people who deserve all the love and support we can give them. I don't understand. They're mental patients. From Broadmoor? No, from the sister hospital, Rampton. And I decided to treat them all to a day out at the seaside. That's lovely, Jim. No. Just trying to be... Good couple, eh? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I just felt like I was getting somewhere. Felt like I was getting somewhere and, I, you know, I, I, I didn't want to leave. He's obviously... he's obviously lonely. He just wants an audience, really, get things off his chest. I will. I've said I will. I'll be back tonight. Yeah. I promise.
I sense Mrs. Wordsmith threatening burnt dinners in the doghouse. <laughs> ah, not quite. Tell you, the brain damage, wives. Whereas the love of my life never gave me anything but happiness. More beautiful than ever. You're all mine now. I don't have to share you anymore. I promise, I won't do it anymore. I swear, don't with it. I meant it when I said that. You said what? When I, when I promised her that I wouldn't do any of that shit again. What shit, Jimmy? Hello? It's Johnny. That lawyer has sent his report in. And? We're going to have to tighten up audience supervision. <laughs> no young girls wandering around the building. But he's concluded that instances of immorality are rare. No further action will be taken over the girl who committed suicide. He didn't consider the evidence justified the allegations. It was like it was all in her imagination. Sad case blown out of proportion by the papers. So I'm in the clear. Well, I think the BBC do know what they've got with you. Hmm? Mr. J. Savile, OBE. Thank you, Choir Master. What have we got here then, Peter? One for the fun palace, Shav. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Jimmy. I mean, she's made up and she's got something she wants to ask you. And what might that be, young lady? Ask him. Can I be one of the girls on top of the pot? Well, not only will I make sure you're on the telly, I'll also buy it and move. How about that? <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, but first, I said you'd show her the amusements. Yeah, but, you know, not without the... Mum and Dad's permission, eh? Of course, absolutely. <laughs> then how could I possibly refuse? <laughs> that way, young lady, lead on. See you later. Bye. Have fun. If Jimmy can make some beer, he's absolutely. Oh, she's going to be so happy. Princess like you, walk. Never. Off we go. 